everyone. Welcome to Wool and Spinning. My name is Rachel and I can be found pretty much everywhere as, well actually that's not true anymore. Wool and Spinning on Instagram and then Well for Pearls is still my Ravelry handle. Um, I probably should change it. But hello everybody. This is episode 268. I want to welcome you to this place. Thank you for being here. Uh, it is very sunny outside, not a, not a cloud in the sky. I'm coming to you from just outside of Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada in the Pacific Northwest. And uh, we are going into a few days of, of another sort of heat wave um, where it's gonna be very, very hot. And we've had this beautiful breeze for the last week. So it would have been a lot hotter, except that we've had this lovely wind and this lovely breeze. So it's kept the temperatures more moderate, but now that we're sort of getting closer to summer, it's getting hotter and hotter. So. Thank you so much for being here. We have a ton to cover today. Um, I have a couple of projects that I wanted to share with you and um, we've got some really fun community participation that people have shared, but we also have some big, big news to share with you guys. Um, some of you who've been on the Slack channel in the last 20 minutes will have seen the post already. And those of you who subscribe to Andrea Mowry's uh, newsletter and have checked it this morning, you guys will have seen it as well. But I wanted to, um, uh, um, yeah, we'll 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 talk about that when we get to it. So there are there's some really fun stuff that I have to announce uh, today, um, and I'll go through sort of your our year of color stuff where we're at for the month. Just make some quick announcements for you guys, and um, yeah, <laughs> it's really a big day. Um, so we've got lots to get into. So I am just going to go over here because it's a little bit easier for me to chat to you from over here. Um, we have had a little bit of a break in podcasting. I have to admit, I do appreciate these months where we have that extra week because it just gives me that one extra week to just feel like I can regroup and rest and, um, you know, we have a lot of life going on just like everybody and uh, it just means that we're not cramming quite so much into four weeks. So it gives me that extra week of, of podcasting. It's sort of like a natural break two or three times a year. That said, um, we spent uh, in May in Canada, there's a, a long weekend. It's the week bef the weekend before Memorial Day long weekend in the States. Um, so we were able to take off, see my brother and sister-in-law in Victoria for the weekend. So I've got some footage of that. Uh, we went to a couple of soccer games. Nora and I went on a couple of big walks and we stumbled on a beautiful greenhouse. So there's that. What else did we do? There's so much. James had a, a swimming program at school. So there's footage of that. It goes for a little bit, but trust me, it's worth it to watch that little segment um, of him in the boat for a little bit. And um, yeah, it just, uh, we've, we've had a really full three weeks. And then on top of it, last week, I ended up in bed for three days. I was so sick um, and it wasn't anything like in particular. I, I didn't have any symptoms of anything, but I was so nauseated um, that I just, I ended up being in bed for almost, almost three days. So we kind of lost a bunch of time. I was hoping to have a bunch of stuff done. I didn't get the kids uh, teachers gifts finished. We'll talk about that later in the show. And uh, yeah, it just, um, ended up being a, a little bit of a, it ended up being really too bad in the midst of everything that was going on. Um, so yeah, so without further ado, here's what's been going on in my life for the last um, three weeks. I hope you enjoy.
thank you for watching that you guys and thank you for taking the time it's really fun for me to be able to share with you like what our life looks like when I'm not doing this you know and I think it's sometimes it's it's um, it's hard to kind of like em envision or see what somebody's life looks like when outside of all of this that we do and this is one part of what what I do and it's fun to be able to share with you guys the rest of of our life and what we do and thank you so much you guys that that's so kind um suzanne says you have such wonderful children thank you so much rebecca says she really does thank you my um yeah they are they're really really fun they're just awesome awesome kids um yeah and the face paint the girl that was doing it she was incredible she's probably in her like I don't know, like late 40s, super funky outfit. She had this like dyed bright red hair, these amazing red earrings that were massive. And she had this super funky outfit. Nora was just like, oh. <laughs> and after we walked away, she's like, I want to be her when I grow up. I was like, yeah, I can see why. Like just so, so cool. And she was so fast. So she was just like whipping through the kids. She has like a specific repertoire of things that she does. And she's so fast. Like Nora was done within about four minutes. It was incredible. And she has a mirror set up so the kids can see as she's building the face. It was really cool. So yeah, very, very cool. All right, what do we have going on this month? We have a lot going on this month. Um, the Wool Circle was yesterday. For those of you who missed it, the um, Wool Circle is all there on Patreon for you guys to pop in and check it out. Um, Rebecca got together with Dion, and you guys know Dion because she's part of our community, a very, very active member of our community. And um, her and Dion had this lovely conversation. So I hope that you guys who are wool circlers, that you guys will check that out. Um, if you are not sure if you are a wool circler, uh, click on the, 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 the post, make sure you're signed in and you might be able to watch it if you're, if you're um, um, a, a, a wool circler. If not, you can go in and edit your pledge as well and you can, you can do that on Patreon. Um, the wool... Wool and Spinning Radio has been released for this month. It is part two of me and Rebecca's conversation about our clothing and about our clothing philosophy and how our approaches have changed in terms of approaching our wardrobe. So you can check that out on all major places that you get your podcasts. Google Play, Spotify, Amazon Music. Is it Amazon? Yeah. Audible. Um, anywhere. Wherever you get your podcasts, it's, it is there. Maker Morning is tomorrow morning. It is the first Wednesday of the month. So that is on tomorrow morning at 6.30 Pacific. I hope to see you guys there. Queries is this coming Saturday and Spinning Staples is next Wednesday on my birthday. So um, hopefully we will see you guys. Um, if, you are, if you are part of all of that, we will see you guys there. All right, now for the really fun part. Okay, so we have some events coming up. And we have some very fun events coming up. So let me just slow down a minute and tell you guys about all of this. Tour de Fleece and Tour de Fleece Femme is coming up uh, in July. The dates run from, oh shoot, I had all of the notes. Yeah, it's right here. July 21st to 23rd and then the 23rd to the 30th. I didn't include all of the rest days and the challenge days on here because the slide is already kind of busy. Um, but I will be posting all of that in the Ravelry group and you guys can pop in there, state what your goals are. We are an SYOG team, which means set your own goal. Um, you can spin 15 a day. You can challenge yourself to only spin on spindles. You could do a large project. You could spin for the Attune Shawl. So, um... All of the links, I will add them down below. Um, all of the links are going to be um, um, down below after the show. I will copy and paste. Um, the Attune Shawl. So I reached out to Andrea Mowry. Um, Suzanne had been in our, um, it was one of our Maker Mornings, I think, and she was sharing it with us. It's going to be on community participation. Yeah, Dorothy, there's not really a lot I can do about the text. I'm really sorry. Um, I, the only thing I can kind of do is like make it a bit smaller um, to kind of get it to not look sort of a bit blurry, but everything will be available down below afterward. Um, so hopefully, um, I'll just put everything down below and then, and then it'll be no, no harm, no foul. Anyhow, 
Um, so the, I reached out to Andrea after Suzanne had been sharing about her attune shawl and she was waxing poetic about how amazing it was for hand spun and somebody else in our community had made one as well. And it, we were just all like saying what a wonderful pattern I'm knitting brioche right now anyways. And we were just talking about how, you know, it was really a neat idea, um, to, to do a knit along. We haven't done a spin along knit along together for a while. And I thought that, you know, We've got spindle spun summer coming up, which I'll talk about in a little bit, but what a cool opportunity to come together and do something like this. So the information for the Attune Shawl Along is in Andrea Mowry's newsletter from this morning. So if you haven't opened it yet, go ahead and do that. But all of the information is here as well. Um, use the hashtag spin to knit a tune on Instagram and social media so that me and Andrea can see you guys. And the discount code, it is live as of today to get your copy of the pattern. It is a tune sal, S-A-L, spin along. Um, make sure that you check out properly either in Andrea's web shop or in um, Ravelry. Make sure that you apply that discount code. It can't be done retroactively. Officially, the spin along, knit along starts to June 5th. I'm, I am trying to like, <laughs> um, like indicate where on the slide we are, but it's hard when I'm talking at the same time. So Andrea and I kind of had the idea that you guys could spin during Tour de Fleece, Tour de Femme for your tune shawl and then knit through August. And we'll run this until September 15th. There will be prizes. Andrea's offered up some patterns. I'm gonna stash dive and see if I can find a braid of fiber and um, offer that up as well. And um, we will, um, draw prizes later in September and I will have an FO thread a finished objects thread set up later in the summer for you guys to start putting your stuff in as you finish stuff off so that we can draw from that thread toward the end of the summer or toward the end of September so um, it's a great project for Tour de Fleece you could pair there are some rules I will put them in the show notes after the show but basically the long and the short of it is you can use commercial yarn if you want. We'd really like to see people using hand spun, at least one of the two yarns. You need two yarns for this. You need a lot of yardage. Um, and so, you know, if you've got a commercial yarn that you want to pair with a hand spun yarn, but for our community in particular, please try to use um, commercial hand spun yarn for at least one of them. Um, that would be, that would be awesome. Liz is offering up some prizes as well. Thank you so much, Liz. Um, I will connect with you and, um, yeah, that would be so much fun. So I hope you guys um, will think about joining in. That starts on June 15th and we'll have more information next show. I think that's everything for housekeeping. I'm really excited about this. I think it'll be really fun to do something together as a community. And um, I'm hoping to look through my stash. I'm gonna spin through Tour de Fleece for my yarn. And then um, I've already got my contrast color spun. And then I'll, sp I'll I, I think I know what I wanna use for my, for my color. Um, and yeah, I'll go from there. So I, I've, I've been thinking and having some ideas and kind of waffling about what I maybe want to do, but I'll, uh, yeah, I'll let you guys know next show because I'm going to plan for next show to have you guys. Uh, we're looking at, you're looking at, oh, great question, uh, Lisa. She's wondering what yarn weight are we talking? We're talking somewhere between a sport and a DK. That's what the pattern calls for. The yarn that I've already spun is a sport. So I'm thinking that I'll spin a sport weight for my color as well. I'm sort of aiming for roughly 14 wraps per inch ish. And the nice thing is about a shawl, you don't have to be bang on with yard with um, your gauge. You do need about 700 yards of each color. So you need about 1400 yards of yarn. So um, do keep that in mind. She says in the pattern somewhere between 600 and 700 yards. So keep that in the back of your mind when you're planning your project. Um, yeah, it'll be really fun. I'm excited to share this with you guys and to do this with you. I think it'll be really fun. All right. Um, we are going to run the intro credits and get into the show. I've got some spindles to share with you. They are right here. I've got news newspaper to give you some updates on and, um, we've got lots of, uh, lots of other stuff. So let's, let's get into it. And we have a brand new show sponsor. So I want to say an extra special thank you as this show in intro credits, um, role, uh, to Brother Drum Carter for reaching out and for offering and, and wanting to sponsor the show. So I'll see you guys on the other side.
A thank you to our sponsor, Brother Drum Carter. They are dedicated to giving you the very best of carding products with a focus on quality, affordability, and customer satisfaction. They are building mill processing equipment, so please stay tuned. Be sure to check out the new products on their website and follow them on Facebook and Instagram at Brother Drum Carter. anybody has noticed but we have a, an official logo I don't know nobody said anything but I'm sure you guys have seen it um, it's starting to pop up more and more I've started to incorporate it with everything but we have officially crossed <laughs> a huge chasm of getting branding and logos and so you guys saw it just now in the intro credits it just uh, ran at the end um, the new logo is the woolen spinning in the circle kind of like emulating like the um, the the whirl of a of a spindle and um, with the with our like tagline in in the middle and then you guys will notice down here where the subscribe button is now we have an official stamp that's sort of meant to be like a spindle whirl so um, yeah that is huge I want, and you'll notice that the banner on YouTube, the banner on Patreon, it is all brand new. It's all rebranded. It's all redone. So an extra, extra, extra special thank you to the work, the huge amount of work that Amanda has done over the last six months to make that happen for us. So, um, yeah, I'm incredibly pleased. Uh, we have colors, we have logos, we have branding. The next big thing is the website. So I will announce that when it goes live so that, um, um, you know, you guys can go over and have a look. So thank you so much. It's been a lot of hard work. It's been a lot of, a lot of burning the candle at both ends and lots of working, um, on like, you know, sort of where I want to, where I want to take all of this, what I want it to look like, um, visioning all the stuff that you do as a small business owner in the background that nobody sees. And, um, yeah, it's, it's all starting very slowly to come together. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And, uh, yeah, I agree. It's, it's a lot of hard work, but it's, um, it's worth it. Yeah. And the colors are so perfect says Rebecca. Uh, I didn't know when I did the photos of my clothing, like of my closet, that those were the colors that were gonna be pulled out. And Amanda had already pulled those colors out and she had already pulled out from my overall aesthetic. I didn't know I had an aesthetic, but she said I do. And um, she had already pulled all of it. And when I approached her about doing this work and uh, we were going through all like the, the logistics of it, you know, cost and all that kind of stuff. Um, she had pulled those colors already and I, and then I went and did my clothing stuff with Rebecca on the podcast and I took the photo and I was like, huh, amazing. So very cool. The colors are, they, as soon as I saw them, I was like, yes. So it's amazing. All right. If you guys um, have any questions about the Attune Shawl Along, we'll be talking about it later because I've got uh, Suzanne to actually show you guys. And so if you have any more questions about the Attune Shawl Along, please don't hesitate to, to post them and to ask them because I can address them um, as we go along. All right, the first um, thing that I want to talk about was spindling. So I will see you guys on the other side and we'll talk all about spindles. So I have to thank Diana for these, uh, for this little hookup, if you will. And when I contacted uh, Mai, um, she was so lovely and she was so wonderful to chat to. And we ended up standing in the parking lot of the film studio that she was working at that week, um, chatting for quite a while. So this is Inoxia Crafts. And um, I put her information and everything in the show notes. So I'll, um, so it's all there in the show notes. You guys can, I put this link there for you guys. And of course she's got this QR code. I can hold it here for a minute if you guys wanna use your phones. And um, especially if you're watching this back later, you can hit pause and take a photo. Anyhow, 
She's located here in the greater Vancouver area and she started making spindles. She's quite a prolific spinner herself and Diana had met her at our, I think it was at our spin-in for our guild, which I missed because I was working. I'm pretty sure that's where it was, right Diana? And she's making these lovely uh, top whirl drop spindles and Diana was quite quite tickled and took a couple home, bought some extra, I'll, t I'll talk about kind of the logistics of these things in just a minute and um, started playing with them. It was waxing poetic about them at Guild to me. Gave me her email address. I emailed May and was like, hey, I'd love to give these a try. I'd love to, you know, see what they're like. They seemed ideal for going camping. Like, to be honest with you, a simple dowel, 3D printed, um, just like my turtle made spindles, if they fall on the ground or if they get muddy or if they get dusty or dirty when we're away, not a big deal. Once I get the yarn or the singles off of there, I can just, you know, um, wash it when I, when I get the singles off. Okay. So it was at our spin in, um, our guild spin in. And, uh, so I, I, she sent me photos of all of the spindles that she had available and she had this sea foam one, which is just beautiful. And actually I do have some better photos. So if you give me a second, I'll show you this one. And then there was this one. This is all I have left. I could not get it done. Uh, before the show, but isn't that incredible? So I've got some photos to actually share with you guys. Um, where is it? Here it is. And um, of all these different spindles. And so you can just watch them as they cycle through. But the sort of the, um, like the stats, if you will, um, the total weight of the spindles is 46.5 grams. So they're a little bit heavier. Um, they're 1.6 four ounces for those who work in Imperial and um, but you can because of them being a bit heavier you can really get some twist on them so if you run it down your thigh it just spins and spins and spins and spins it is it, it goes like stink um, which is really really cool uh, the length the total length is um, eight nine point eight centimeters or three and seven eighths of an inch um, for the bobbins. So that's for this part in here, which I'll talk about in just a sec. Um, and the actual dowel length is 20 centimeters or eight inches, which I really like. I, I found this length really good. And when I run it down my thigh, having this much at the end and being able to run it down my thigh, like here has been, that's like the perfect amount. And because you've got the bobbin, which I'll talk about in just a sec, you can't load singles or yarn down here. So I have found that it's kept the cop really beautifully tight and um, organized and it it's really forced me to keep this winding um, really intentional and and as I build a bigger cop like you can see how how controlled it is and how easy it is to um, to oh, to build that like it's just tight it's easy um, it looks really nice I don't have any issues um, with with winding it and the bobbin itself just naturally stops it. So let me talk about the cool thing about these. So this one's done. She included these two bats in the bag. Um, they were textured and kind of interesting and um, they were just fun to spin. Um, they had some stuff mixed into them, which was really fun. But she includes on here, and I'll try to get the camera to focus on, on the spindle and not my face, um, these two rubber stoppers here. So those two rubber stoppers get pulled off. These, this is just the coolest thing ever. Okay. And it comes off. Oh, like, look at that. Isn't that incredible? So this comes off and you can buy these. If you, she has a deal where if you buy a certain number of spindles, then you get a certain number of bobbins at a certain price and then oh after that you pay a couple of extra dollars but like honestly we're talking about like four or five dollars versus seven dollars like it's nothing especially when it's canadian to us dollars um but this fits perfectly on a lazy kate and then you can either do one of two things you can either ply off of this so if you have all of your different bobbins of all of your singles and then you can just ply either onto your spindle or onto your wheel because a lot of people spin their singles and they um, their plan is to then ply on their wheel so this is ideal but I was thinking for myself um, I have my little lazy Kate that I take when I'm spindle spinning and um, 
and I wind all of my weaving bobbins off or I use weaving bobbins to wind off all of my singles from my spindles and then I put my weaving bobbins on my little lazy Kate. My dad made it for me. It works really well. It was off after a prototype that my friend Kim McKenna had and I he just copied. I took a photo of it. I gave it to him and, and he copied it. It was it was perfect. And um, but so when I take that camping, what I do is then I, I create a plying ball. So instead of winding off onto weaving bobbins, I'll, I'll just create a plying ball. So Mike will hold the spindle for me and I'll create by hand a, a plying ball. Um, this is revolutionary though, because I can put, I can take this with me and, um, put the, as I finish the bobbins, I can throw them on here. I never take a wheel when we go, when we're camping. So I can still wind a plying ball, get back to the first spun end, which we've talked about a lot on this podcast and, um, and ply. And I can still ply to the spindle or I can take my plying spindle that I really like to use, which is the Schneider Spindles Steampunk Spindle, which again was a hookup from Diana Twist. Um, she is my spindling guru and um, yeah, and I just thought this was awesome. Like this is so unbelievably clever. And so now that I've finished spinning this, I can grab one of my empty ones and pop this onto here. And there are some notches here. See if I can get the camera to stay focused on the top there. And you just click it in and it clicks in. It makes a little clicking sound, which is very, very satisfying. And then you pop your rubber stoppers back on. And you can start spinning again. And you're off to you're off to the races. Oh, it popped out. That was my fault. I didn't hold it in while I was putting the rubber stoppers on. You do have to really make sure that you push the rubber stoppers right up to the bottom because I what I was finding as I was spinning was it was migrating down and it's just because the rubber stoppers weren't right flush against the edge of the spindle uh, the edge of the bobbin like no big deal. No harm, no foul. Um, the other thing, Diana did this with hers and I have not had a chance. She I Lisa, you took the thoughts right out of my mind. I hope she patents this as well. Um, because like seriously, and uh, it's not me introducing you to this. It's Diana. <laughs> I'm, I totally am. And like, do like plugging these because of Diana twists. So it's all Diana. Um, the, uh, uh, what Diana did with hers, and I was talking to Maya about this, and Maya was like, absolutely, definitely a good idea to do. She just, at the price point that she's selling these at, she can't do that, do this and, and do this extra step. But what Diana did was she put some um, wood finishing oil on here, and it just gives it a really nice, like, feel. I haven't done it yet, but I will. Um, and then she also... And I don't have another spindle right here to show you, but she filed down just with a little bit of sandpaper and made this more of a point. And I think, I might be wrong, but I think Diana um, posted a photo in the Slack channel under the hashtag uh, spindle spun summer. I don't know if it's called spindle spun summer anymore, that, that thread. I think it's just called spindles. Um, where is it? Spindle. It's really active, that one. Uh, spindle spun stitches. Um, it's under there, but I'm pretty sure she posted a photo of what the bottom of it looks like. I might be wrong, but I'm, I, it's definitely on Instagram. So, um, Diana, if you want to post your username on Instagram so that people can go and check you out and follow you, follow Diana. Um, she's so inspirational, but yeah, aren't these the coolest thing? They are so fun. And you know, I have to admit, I had really be gotten out of the habit of pulling my spindles out. And I always say the summer, the summer, the summer, the summer. And um, we've had some beautiful weather and I haven't grabbed my spindles. And really it's because they're put away and I need to pull them out, go through them, come up with a couple of projects that I want to work on this summer and just start, start spinning. And, um, you know, I haven't had my support spindles out for a couple of months now. And I finished that Cormo spin and I felt really burned out. Um, and, I, you know, I finished the stole. I waxed, I waxed poetic about it on the, on the podcast. You know, I, I waxed poetic about my, my spindle spun, my support spindle spun 100% Cormo hand dyed, hand woven stole, um, from 
and, and I think just the sheer amount of spinning that that took and the, and the amount of time and um, I was learning to support spindle. That was a great project because it forced me to keep going and I was learning how to do it. But it just, I think I was a little bit burned out at the end. I haven't really gotten my, my like spinning mojo back. Like it's, it's been a while and I haven't really felt that like real pull to really spin. Like I'm, I'm waiting for that like oomph to get going again with like a really big spin. And I think to be honest with you, I got a bit bogged down with all of the year of color sampling. Like I was making all those little samples and I have 22, <laughs> 22 little mini skeins on here that I need to ply. I'm going to work on them tomorrow during maker morning. And I think I just kind of burned out a little bit. And I, I want to sink my teeth into a really big spin and I just, I'm not quite there yet. And the other thing is that I had this big win with my fin. I just dropped it. Um, with my fin, I had these three skeins that I had initially plied and finished um, from those initial uh, bats and stuff that I, that I, had, that I had prepped. And I, again, I have to do like the next bit now and I need to go to fiber prep group on Friday at 8 a.m. Pacific. Um, the links will be in the Slack channel because I, I need to get going with this again. I have a whole bunch of it lock popped. I need to keep lock popping and then card a bunch of it up and get spinning again. And I think that's really what I need to do. And I just have, I've just been kind of slow to like get that going again. However, you guys have seen sort of what the last couple of months have been like because I've been sharing it on the podcast and I have to be really kind to myself and recognize that there are 24 hours in a day, nine or 10 are spent sleeping because I sleep a lot and um, I, there's only so much time. There's only so much time. So, and I'll talk about what's been taking the majority of my time and attention uh, over the previous number of weeks um, after like later in the show because um, I'm really excited to share with you what I've been working on. That's true. Amanda has a really good point. She said you refound your knitting mojo. So there is a positive. That's absolutely right. I can't spin and knit and weave all at the same time. <laughs> I know revolutionary, right? Like profound thoughts here. You guys, you come here for the profound thoughts. They're incredibly obvious. <laughs> But I do find that if I sink my teeth into a big project, like, like trying to finish uh, pressed flowers, like I really sunk my teeth into that and I just worked on it until it was done. And now newspaper has kind of been like that. Um, there's not a whole lot else that happens. And, and that's how I work. I'm not particularly good at being multi craftual in the same moment. Like I can't work on something for a little bit and then pivot to something else and then pivot to something else. Like I, some people are better at that than I am. And I find that if I'm working on a project, I want to work on that project until it's done. And it's not because I particularly care about the finished object. I find it really hard to switch. My brain is way better if I'm actually focused on one thing. Um, I find when I start to switch and I start to work on different stuff and kind of, oh, I'm going to work on this for a bit. And okay, now I've got another time I'm going to work on this. I'm really bad at that. Um, and uh, Amanda says no one is good at multitasking, which I completely agree. And I, there's so much research out there to support that and to show that the brain is not meant to multitask. It's a misnomer and it's a, it's kind of an old wives tale, but some people seem to have multiple projects and they kind of pick up what they feel like and they work on it for a bit and then they put that down and the next time they have a chance they pick what pick up what they feel like and they work on that and then the next time so i'm not talking about it like in one crafting session i'm talking about like over the course of like a week or a month i'm not good at that i can't do that i need one project that's what i'm doing that's what i'm working on until it's done so yeah Oh, Kelly, just save it. You, you just finished it. That's totally fine. Just, you'll be able to s submit it for, uh, for, for, um, in the, in the FO thread when I put that up. Absolutely. It's therapeutic hour. <laughs> Thanks, Dagmar. I appreciate that. Um, all right. Let's talk about my newspaper. I'm not going to go on and on about it, but I, I do want to share a little bit about it. So let's go into knitting next. Uh, Amanda was saying it's good to know what works best for you. It is important. I always feel like um, 
because of the podcast, I'm always thinking in the back of my mind um, that there needs to be enough to talk about on the podcast. There needs to be fodder for the podcast. I need to have enough projects on the needles and projects on the spindles and projects on the on the wheels and the looms uh, to have stuff to talk about. I'm over that now. <laughs> I just um, go doing something like sweater reflections, which I don't have for today for you. But you know, the, the idea that was in that survey that I did recently where people wanted to, wanted me to re reflect back on sweaters that I've made in the past and bring them forward and talk about what went well and what I would have done differently. Um, I didn't want to do it today cause I knew that Diana was going to be dressed up in, in newspaper, but we'll do it next time. Um, that having segments like that are really valuable, I think. Um, and, and several, like many people have asked for like spinning growth to come back. I just need you guys to post in Ravelry, like post in the spinning growth thread and I will do spinning growth. Um, the ask anything thread post in there, ask questions. We'll do ask anything again, all that stuff. I think there's a lot of value in those. And so I've taken that pressure off myself and completely let that go about making sure that I have tons and tons of stuff going on and that I'm making tons and tons. I just, I, I think you guys get it. You're in the same boat. Okay, so knitting. This is the newspaper. So for those who are new here and haven't seen this yet, this is a brioche style pullover um, from Hohi Locatelli. And um, she, when she published this a couple of years ago, immediately I threw it into my queue on Ravelry because I loved it so much. And um, I really liked the styling. I really liked the colors that she chose. I liked what it looked like. I just thought, yes, yes, yes. Oh, it keeps doing that. I'm sorry, you guys. I'll get the hang of it. It's new. I'm, I'll get the hang of all the credits and stuff. And um, so I, I chose some yarn at Fibers West back in March when, when Rebecca was here. And this is Gathering Yarns, uh, gathering yarn Brook Farm fingering in coral and dark brown. So the color, the yarns are here. And uh, I've talked on the podcast already about like why I chose these colors, wanting something a little bit more warm versus a cooler contrast. Um, and you know, the dark versus the light and getting an adequate contrast rather than choosing a neutral gray that was the same value. Um, I've talked about all of that on previous episodes. So please go back and, and have a look if you want to know more. Um, the whole sweater is brioche, as you can see. So you work from the top down. It is a raglan and, um, she gives you row by row, all of the instructions as to how to do it. So if you've never increased in brioche before, and you've never knit, um, something as complicated as a sweater in brioche, everything is written out line by line. Like you have nothing to worry about. If you're willing to be patient, maybe tink back a couple of rows. If you kind of, if you mess up a little bit, but if you can, do that, it's worth it. Um, it is such a satisfying knit. Yes, it's a lot of knitting. I feel like with this project, you're knitting every single stitch and it's because you're knitting every row. Like to make one row of brioche, you have to knit it twice. Once in the one color, once in the other color. So you've got your main color, which here is the coral. And then you have to do your background color, which is the dark brown. Here, obviously it's reversed, 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 reversed. All this through here is built as you cast on and it stitches to slowly build um, out the, the front of the sweater. And then you join to work in the round and you work down. And then you have these color changes um, and you go and you keep on going down and, and work on the sleeve. The cool thing is the sleeves are opposite. So you can see that here it's the coral against the dark brown and here it's the dark brown against the coral, which is really cool. I did pick up extra stitches under the arm. Um, I was really torn about doing this because I had extra stitches under here that needed to be, that, that I would have had to sew closed, but I also was a bit worried about the sweater being a little bit too tight around the, around the upper arm. And, um, so I did end up casting on a few extra stitches for the one size up. And then I decreased per that size, um, rather than trying to get away with the size that I'd knit in the body, um, and having the, the, the brioche, like stretch like this across my arm. I, I just thought, you know, you, that's where you want it to look like you've got some ease so that it hangs and falls properly. And when I tried it on, I think it worked really well. So I finished all the increases. Now I'm just knitting straight. Um, I need to finish this color 
and then I have one more and that'll give me 16 inches of knitting length and then three inches for the cuff at the bottom. This is three inches as well. It doesn't look like three inches, but it is. Um, tubular cast offs for everything. So tubular cast off for the neckline, tubular cast off for the, for the hem, for all of the cuffs and the hems. Um, yeah, it's coming together. I was really hoping that I would have it finished for today, but sadly it is, it's a lot of knitting and knitting in the round brioche on small needles. Um, I should tell you what the needles are. Um, it takes, it takes time. It is not fast. <laughs> it is not fast. So the brioche is being knit on three millimeter needles, which is 2.5 US 2.5s. And, um, the ribbing I'm doing in 2.75 millimeter needles, which is a US size two, only because I refused to go down to a 2.5 millimeter needle. I was like, nope, I'm not going down that small. It's too small, I'm not doing it. So it's 2.75, yeah. <laughs> Eve says, dressed up in newspaper like a 19th century orphan, yeah. <laughs> well, I didn't wanna go through a costume change, right? It's annoying when I'm trying to like share with you guys and I'm trying to like talk and then I'm getting up and I'm moving around and it's annoying. So yeah, it's gonna be a, such a stunner ready for fall. I hope so, Charlotte, that's my hope. I'm really hoping that this is done. I can put it, pair it with a pair of high-waisted jeans and that it just is really great for those cool days where it's like, you know, 16, 14 degrees, you need a sweater, but you don't need anything else. Um, we usually get a few of them um in the in the fall we don't usually get a ton because it kind of goes from like summer to winter very quickly um and of course we get the rain but um i'm hoping hoping i get a few a few days to uh to wear it okay the next thing i've got to show with you is weaving i have weaving on the loom so let's go into that next I am really excited about this because I haven't had weaving to share with you guys for a while and it's really fun for me to be able to share this with you. So um, let me just have this playing in the background. So this is me weaving. Um, this pattern is from Jane Stafford. You can see that right there on the sheet. She has such a distinctive logo, the JST. Everybody kind of knows Jane now. Um, and uh, this is actually a kit. So it's called Rustic Elegance. If you are um, on the Jane Stafford website, um, look under kits for rustic elegance. And sometimes there's the rustic elegance cotton and sometimes it's only the linen kit that's in stock. So I bought the cotton kit. Um, I bought this quite a long time ago. I bought it on a sale when they had one of their massive sales. I think they do it a couple of times a year. And um, the um, basically the, the, I, I put it away. I didn't work on it. And the reason why I bought the kit was for the pattern. Um, so the kits aren't cheap and you get the yarn. I already had the yarn, but I, I can always use eight to cotton. Um, I wanted the pattern and you can't download the pattern off of the website without getting, um, the kit. It's all like, that's how they earn their money. Right? So I wanted to support them. I bought it in a, in a sale and, um, it sat. And then I needed, um, I wanted to get some tea towels on the loom for the kids' teachers. These are not done. The teachers will not get them today. Today is my kids' last day of school. So next show, the kids will be in the house somewhere doing their thing. And uh, so we're, we're now officially at 3 p.m. today. We are in official summer break. We still have stuff at the school to go to, but like school is done. So as you guys know, the next three months are always a little bit tricky for me when the kids are home and they're around and they're underfoot. So um, I appreciate like when you guys send me messages and, and all that kind of stuff, I usually just can't get back quite as quickly as I normally do. Um, so thank you for just keeping that in the back of your minds. Anyhow, I really, this loom has been empty for quite a long time and I really wanted to get something onto the loom and work on something. And I pulled out the kit and I was looking at it and I was looking at the colors and I was looking at all the things. And I just thought, you know, I think this is one of those situations where I just need to choose the colors that I want to do and follow the pattern and throw it on the loom. And you know, it was on the loom within two evenings. It was super fast. I warped it super quickly and I got it 
on the loom really fast. It, I wound it on really quickly. It was, it, I didn't even use mic. I just was like, I'm just getting this on the loom. And it's on. So I've woven five towels thus far. I wound an 11 yard warp and so it's quite long. I don't want to cut off until it's done. I want all of the towels done. I can throw them in the laundry. I'll serge each end. I'll throw them in the wash and then I'll cut them apart. So the kids have a year end school picnic on the 21st of June. These have to be off the loom the week before. So next week. And um, I'm just going to worry about finishing two of them. So that's it. I'm just going to finish two and then um, and we'll gift them to the teachers on at the picnic. And um, then they can um, I'll, I'll finish the other ones this summer kind of thing. So I don't know if you figured it out yet, but this is Huck. Um, that's part of the reason why I was so drawn to these is because of Huck. Um, the I love Huck. I particularly love weft spot. So this is weft spot and uh, it's, it's mindless. It's tabby float, tabby float, tabby, other tabby float, tabby float, tabby. Um, but it's the threading and all of that. That's, that's the reason why you want to buy the pattern. If, if you guys decide to do that. So for the colors, the pattern itself is dark gray, light gray and natural, which is why I was so drawn to it. It's so neutral. It's, uh, they're warm grays. Um, it just, I love that kind of stuff. It looked very elegant, but rustic, hence the name. It looked, they just look like towels that I could use in the trailer, um, which I know hand woven towels in the trailer. I know, but, um, I do need towels out there and the color of the trailer inside is gray. So I thought, you know, I'll take three or four of them and I'll put them in the trailer and then all the remainder I'll, I'll use in the house, maybe gift one or two. But for the teachers, I didn't want to use the kit for the teachers because I wanted different colors. So what I used for the teachers is this beautiful warm khaki kind of greeny brown color on this side. And then on the other side, I used this beautiful peachy salmon pink. It's very neutral, very light, just like the original pattern. And then um, there's the natural that runs um, with it um, when you're warping. I don't want to give too much of the pattern away because you really should purchase it. It is a four purchase pattern. And then what I've been doing for the body of each of the towels is rather than trying to do stripes or anything, which are called for in the pattern, I've just been weaving them straight because it's faster. So um, I've been using uh, medium gray, the peach, um, and this beautiful cinnamon color that we've cycled through in the photos, this color here, it is gorgeous against the khaki warm brown and the peach. It is really, really pretty. So um, those are the colors that I've been using. I've just been weaving straight 30 inches of pattern, an inch and a half of tabby of, of plain weave at each end. So really, really simple. You're right, Lisa. It's nice. It's meditative. The colors are warm. It's lovely. It's super, super fast. So just a really enjoyable project and I've already woven five. So I'm hoping that, um, I'm hoping I can weave off the remainder. I think I have at least four left, if not five left on this warp and, uh, and then I'll cut it off and, and get, um, get them washed. I have until the 21st, they have to be hemmed by the 20th. So I have a little bit of time. Do you find choosing colors easier after working on spinning color this year? That is an awesome question, Amanda. Thank you for asking. Yes. <laughs> the short answer is yes. I heard this the other day. I was trying to help James. He was, um, he was really struggling with something at school. And I said, I finally said to him, he wanted to say no. And I said to him, James, no is a complete sentence. No period. You don't need to give a reason. You don't need to justify it. You don't need to say why. No, that's it. You can say no thank you if you really want to, but no is a complete sentence. Anyways, that made me think of it. Yes is a complete sentence as well, but I will extrapolate. Uh, the reason why I found it easier to um, choose colors is a lot of actually what Amanda and Dion have mentioned in uh, their notes and stuff on Slack and Ravelry and, and whatnot, and Dion talking uh, in the um, wool circle yesterday I think a lot of it is uh, I can see the undertones now. So when I'm putting colors next to each other and June is all about undertones that will go live next Thursday, the spinning pearls for this month is on undertones. So if you're a patron of the community, the teaching content this month is on undertones. 
what I'm more able to do now is when I line up a bunch of colors um, and I see them next to each other, this is a great example, I can see that the undertones either lean warm or lean cool. And so when I'm putting stuff next to each other, I can see that yes, it works because the undertone is warm. And um, it's getting easier and easier to see and it's taken a long time and it's not easy and intuitive for me. But the more that I see colors next to each other and I see them in relationship to one another, the more I can see that, oh yeah, that's got such a warm undertone or oh my goodness, that's a lot cooler than I thought. Or let me put it with this other color and it's actually, I can pull it more to the cooler side. So like these towels have been really easy to pull colors because I can put all the different like grays next to each other, for example, and be like, oh yeah, that's really warm, that's gonna work. No, that one's really cool, it's got more of a blue under, like it's blue almost, it's got a blue cold undertone, it's not gonna work as well. And I've just started to pull these warm colors out. Um, and then of course the warm, cool contrast, that's been huge. Because knowing that I'm going for kind of a warm, elegant um, cabin type feel, all of a sudden it, it eliminates a whole bunch of color. Um, I'm not gonna put in a primary orange, for example. I would maybe save that for the towels that have the, that are the gray, the ones that were the actual kit. Um, I would love to play with some of the colors toward the end of that warp because natural, natural with dark gray and natural with light gray, I could throw in a primary purple, a primary orange, um, a primary green for the, for the pattern and just see what happens because gray goes with everything. Um, and because they're warmer grays, or they're quite neutral actually, both of the grays that came in that kit are quite neutral. They're a bit warm, one, they're a bit on the warmer side, but they're they're neutral. Um, it'll, it'll work really super well um, to just throw in some of the, that kind of crazy color at the end just to see what happens. So yes, I do find it a lot easier and yes, I feel more confident. That's the biggest thing is I felt a lot more confident stepping out of my comfort zone and saying, I know this will work even if it's not intuitive for me yet. Does that make sense? So yeah, thank you for asking Amanda. That's a great question. Thank you. That is it. Yeah. And it's nice to have that little bit of extra confidence, that little bit of added, like just feeling like you kind of know what you can and can't put together. That's one of the reasons why I was really excited about choosing colors for my Attune shawl because I have a ton of two-ply CVM that was milled by Kingdom, by Kingdom Fleece and Fiber Works, my friend Liz, um, who's here today actually. And it was part of a fleece that me and my friend Greta had uh, split and I did my spark cardigan out of it and I did it as a three-ply. And the remainder of all the bobbins, once I had enough yardage for my spark, I actually um, two-plied the rest of it. And I have tons. I also have more of that roving that I can then, if I need more, I can spin more. I haven't done the actual yardage calculation to see exactly what I have. So I'm, I, I'm, I was actually going to do that this afternoon to know whether or not I need to spin more. But it's a very warm, taupey brown fleece but it's not so warm that I couldn't pull it cool or pull it warm. Like I could do either. I could, I could pull it to the warmer side with, war with a braid of hand-painted roving or hand-painted top that's quite warm and I think I know what I'm gonna use or I could pull it cool and do something cool with it. Like I could do either. Um, I'm torn between two different braids of fiber. I'm pretty sure that I know which one I'm gonna choose. Um, I just need to actually put it in natural light and have a look at it and make sure that it is in fact what I want to do. Because I also have a ton of two ply Beaumont, Beaumont alpaca, Eve, <laughs> that is spun in my stash that I could also use. And so I could pull that one uh, to a uh, slightly cooler um, feel by putting that braid with the undyed Beaumont and save the warm uh, taupey brownie gray uh, CVM for something else. I have to admit though, for a shawl that big, I kind of want to use a color for my contrast color, something that'll be warm, something that'll go with, uh, every, but, but will still go with everything. So yeah, not sure. That's so interesting, Christine. It's interesting because her autistic daughter 
uh, seems to have an instinctive eye for color and makes color combinations that I'd shy away from. She crochets. Um, it's interesting because my mom, um, she's not autistic, but she is very intuitive with color and she'll throw stuff together that I wouldn't in a million years put together and it looks amazing every time. There is a part of this that is definitely um, the intuitive for some people and then there's those of us that have to learn it. And it, the cool thing is it's you can learn it. So, all right, let's go into community participation and uh, I'll see you guys on the other side. participation this month or this week is um there's some fun stuff in here so let's get into it because it's already been an hour I the time goes like this do you guys find that like the hour just goes so fast I already talked about this but I wanted to pop this in here because this was a natural place to be able to share it really quickly because these are the photos so the the one that Andrea is holding is the one that she did it's one of uh, she did that one out of hand spun but the one that's slightly down below and off to the far right is Suzanne's. So that's her hand spun and um, I, the next slide actually goes through like the, um, the, the, um, like her process and what she did. But she also posted in the Ravelry group some of the mini skeins that she had used in the shawl. So I encourage you to go over and have a look because she posted some of the little um, skeins that was how she made um, got the color aesthetic that she got and seriously that some of those skeins of hand spun that she did are absolutely beautiful for the pattern discount don't forget to use um, a tune sal a tune sal all capitals a tune sal spin along or shawl along so I recently finished the attune shawl that I have been working on for a while and had have shared in maker morning I used several spindle spun yarns that were collecting in the basket after noticing how nicely they played with one another. I then spun a natural cream Polworth yarn as the main color. Suzanne's is 100% hand spun. In the end, I also had to throw in a bit of blending board yarn here and there to add the pink in areas and the blue in others for yardage. I am very pleased with the cohesiveness of the yarn of the shawl now. I used a combination of a couple of spindle spun yarns and two other leftover yarns on the blending board. Um, it can work, this project can work really well for stash busting. Isn't that beautiful? So Suzanne, thank you for the idea. Thank you for um, spearheading the Attune shawl along. Uh, it's all you. All right, we have a new group. Uh, the fiber prep group. So Lisa and Dion are sharing the hosting of this. I've been trying to get this off the ground by myself for quite a while, but there just didn't seem to be uh, any uh, space or opportunity for me to like get it going. And I was staring down the barrel of the summer thinking, oh, sweet mother of pearl, how in the tarnation am I going to um, host it when um, there's already sort of so much going on when it's the summer? It's easier in the in the school season but in the summer it gets really tricky anyhow lisa and dion approached me and asked me if they could host this it's just like our book club or our weaving group or our um virtual spin group where it's community led um it's peer led and you guys are the experts and come together when you're able to it's sort of a drop in when you're free and available so the links will be in slack um within a couple of days beforehand they are the, this group fiber prep is meeting this friday at 8 a.m you do have to be a member of the slack channel um so that it's safe and inclusive for everyone um and it's every other friday and it alternates with weaving group which is perfect this group is probably going to change times a little bit. Um, sometimes it'll be in the evening Pacific and sometimes it'll be in the morning Pacific. Dion and, and Lisa are just figuring it out and I'm updating the calendar as, um, as they tell me. So this is what Lisa worked on during um, her one of the fiber prep mornings. Um, thank you for the wonderful time this morning and look at what all I got done. I learned 
all sorts of cool stuff about linen prep from Ellen and Suzanne and Amanda helped me make the better Rolex to help me make better Rolex winner winner chicken dinner a lot of fun and very productive isn't that cool that's the whole point of fiber prep group is that you bring fiber to prep the idea is that we spend the hour together prepping that Fiber prep is quite lonely. It's a little bit monotonous. It's it's the time to get that work done together, uh, just like we would have 100 or 200 years ago when we were working um, in small villages and um, co-raising our children and, and co-living together and, and sharing meals, and we would have done all of this together. So that's the whole point. Nicole just got her a tune pattern. Wonderful, Nicole, awesome. Yeah, make sure you guys grab that because the uh, discount code will expire on June 13th, next Tuesday. So it's going to be live for one week, June 6th to June 16th, uh, June 13th. Dion got this done. Thanks to all my fiber friends who kept me company while I combed and dizzed my Shetland fleece. I was able to fill an 18 inch hackle full. Then I started separating the undercoat on my Raya fleece as well. And that's the blue in the background. Isn't that fantastic? Thanks you guys for sharing all this stuff. All right, spindle spun summer. So this is what I alluded to earlier in the show. Every summer we have a celebration of spindles for three months and we come together and we really intentionally as a community try to work with spindles. Even if it's just one project, even if it's just for 15 minutes a day, it doesn't matter. We try to really celebrate spindles through the summer and all of the community participation tends to be spindle heavy, if not spindle exclusive. So, um, although this year it'll be the Attune Shawl and Spindles, which is pretty cool. So, um, for, so it starts on the summer solstice and it ends on the autumnal equinox. So I don't know what those exact dates are. I'll publish them at some point, but we're celebrating all things spindles, support spindles and, um, suspended. So we're kicking ourselves off from Rebecca, who's been learning, teaching herself how to support spindle. She's halfway through this gradient spin that she's using on her new support spindles. These are all the Turkish likes. The rest are all Russian likes. Um, I think you meant Tibetan, not Turkish. I think you meant Tibetan. These are all the Tibetan like ones, not the Russian. Yeah. The Tibetan ones are the ones where you build a cop against a shelf. Um, and these are all Tibetan spindles, Tibetan style spindles. Yeah. This is from Becca. I think this is a video. I always love it when you guys post multiple photos because then I can, I can show you the, the video. Won't be able to join you for the live stream. So I thought I would show you what I'm working on. The Targi singles are done. They're all set up to ply for a plying ball for a four ply. I should have been in bed more than an hour ago. But once I started applying, it's hard to stop as all the colors come together. You guys, it's so pretty. Isn't that a beautiful skein of yarn? Kind of in love with this one, which means I'm going to have a heck of a time finding a project for it. Haven't measured it yet. Um, waiting for it to be completely dry impatiently. Isn't that incredible? Becca spins the most beautiful yarn. She is such a beautiful spinner and just about a hundred percent just about 100%, probably like 95% of what she spins is on spindles. Yeah. <laughs> Christine says, hmm, do I have enough spindles for all these alongs? Of course I do. <laughs> yes, yes, you do. I do as well. Um, all right, this one is, uh, so we're, and then we've got all of our year of color stuff. So year of color is kind of happening in the background. It's going all year. Um, yes, we've got some new alongs to work on, but the year of color is going to be going all the way until December. So all of the teaching content associated with the show, the wool circle, everything is still year of color. The other stuff, the spindle spun summer and the attune shawl along, that's an opportunity to participate in, in making some stuff. Obviously the year of color is as well. But um, those are kind of more like doing things. Year of Color, we have the theory, we have the formal teaching content. Rebecca and I are gearing all of our stuff to the Year of Color. So um, think of the Year of Color as kind of what we're studying. And the Attune Shawl Along and the Spindle Spun Summer is kind of what we're doing. What we're making, what we're having fun, doing what inspires us, that kind of stuff. Applying the knowledge from Year of Color to those other things. I want to see some really creative colors 
in the Attune Shawl Along. I'm really hoping that there are some people that use the knowledge that we've gleaned from Year of Color and apply it to, um, to their Attune Shawl. And if you do that, please make sure you note that in your comments. This is from Kaylee. While I've been listening and watching all the beautiful work you all have been doing, I haven't participated. But that said, I had to stop and admire this beautiful color wheel quilt at a local quilt show. Thought you all would appreciate the handiwork. Absolutely. Isn't that beautiful? It's really, really lovely. Very well done. I don't know who the maker is or where this is, but yeah, I thought it was just beautifully done and beautifully quilted. That quilting on top, that top work is just amazing. This is from Dion. So this, she talks about this actually in um, the wool circle um, that went live yesterday. So um, I, I won't uh, go through all of this, but um, I will read the first part that she wrote. Um, After the Wool and Spinning Radio podcast episode on clothing philosophy, I had the desire to combine, to examine my closet and do some purging. I noticed several colors I absolutely love on me and wanted to color match them. Here are my attempts at my beloved coral. Coral on Dion is amazing. It's just a beautiful color on her. I'm using a sweater I bought for color reference and the first attempt I really liked but did, couldn't remember my fiber ratios. Make better notes. <laughs> the second I made during Maker Morning and it was off, it was too yellow. And then I remembered, this is kind of Goldilocks-ish, hey? Um, and then I remembered I did have a record of the first attempt, so I repeated that in, in a larger amount. I love that the hue matches, but you can still see the separate colors, which gives the yarn some dimension, absolutely. It gives it some texture and some interest. You can see in that um, uh, nest of fiber, like how, fat, how interesting it is compared to the mono color underneath of the coral. Next, I will spin up this larger sample and use it in some color work. My ultimate goal will be to make a sweater with this blend. I can't wait to see it. This is from Dominique, a, sat a desaturated color wheel. She's speaking me in Rebecca's language. Desaturation, yay! A desaturated color wheel with 10% of the complementary. Interesting, but I don't like this blue-red kind of magenta for the blends. I actually love it. I think it's really cool. Um, the blue is darker, so barely, un barely unaffected by the, by the desaturation. I wonder though, Dominique, if you put the original blue next to it, if maybe you would see the difference a bit more. That's been really helpful for me as comparing colors side by side. You sort of look at it and you think it's not that different, but then you put the original next to it, especially after you spin it and get it into yarn. Um, you might notice that there's more of a difference. Again, undertones, right? Um, I'm in awe of the size of that plied yarn ball on the spindle. Yes, totally. Our minds are about to be blown away by all of the creative creativity from the spin alongs. I agree, Brittany. Absolutely. This is from Amanda. She was having fun with uh, warm and cool. So she blended one gram of warm red and one gram of warm yellow to make a prismatic orange. And then she also blended one gram of warm blue and one gram of cool blue to make a bright blue that was closer to the middle blue. Um, she spun each into singles with a 30 degree twist angle, plied those together into a two ply with a 45 degree twist angle, and then bracelet plied the two ply into a cabled yarn with a 30 degree twist angle. This is glorious. You can see how the blue and orange blips are clearly bright and have a good contrast, yet from a distance, the fabric's color looks toned down since blue and orange are complements. I love this and I would love to see this yarn in a sweater. So if you could just go ahead and do that, Amanda. <laughs> But it makes me think of, to be honest with you, jokes aside, it makes me think of um, those marled yarns that you see on the market that are one strand dark, one strand light, especially the Cascade Ecological. And then it's knit into a sweater that has this lovely overall texture. A lot of people use that for the weekender. And um, this would be an awesome, awesome alternative because I think actually that this fabric is a little bit more interesting. I like it a little bit better and it would withstand wear and tear because of the cabling. Um, that would work beautifully. I think this would be a great, great fabric to make for something like the Weekender. Yeah, 
Yeah, isn't that swatch just beautiful? It is beautiful. So yeah, well done, Amanda. Thank you so much for sharing. That is stunning. I love a cabled yarn and working colors into it. That is amazing. Yeah, you'll have to try it now too, Diana. Um, uh, and report back, see what you get by combining different warms and different cool colors and see what you can create. All right. General makes and shares. So this is really fun because this is all the stuff that also happens in a community. We've got all this other stuff going on. On top of that, you guys are still making and creating a ton. So let's get into it. This is from Alberto. I love this photo so much. I've been, been on a major Romney spin since February, spinning almost daily. He's been working on it in Maker Morning. He's been keeping himself accountable and making himself work on it. He finished it at the end of April and he was pro-offered ideas about how to show, showcase and celebrate it. And one was to take a, a pic of me as the conquering hero um, with my foot on it and one I will post later with it draped over the drying rack. I do have that photo and I'll share it with you guys next time. As it put as as it was put into uh, to the medieval rack and beaten into submission. Love it. I love Alberto's uh, sense of humor. Tons of yarn. I'm curious to know what your yardage is. So once you uh, start to start to uh, measure it, I want to I want to know. This beautiful uh, number of photos from Sam is this gorgeous spin that she did. It was Eurovision last Saturday, which isn't my favorite, so I started a spin. It was a gray Shetland base and, and silk. Um, it washed, plied, and dried, so ready to cast on. Almost too pretty to knit up, almost. Isn't that beautiful? Love that yarn. Gorgeous, Sam. <laughs> Lisa says, I came, I spun, I conquered. Yes. <laughs> The never ending Romney. Yeah, just like the never ending Beaumont. We have a theme here, you guys. This is the spin that never ends. <laughs> All right, this is from Amanda. I wanted to share this right from the beginning so that you guys knew, those of you who missed the last show, and please go back and have a look at what, what this was. But um, she spun and knit these socks um, and she wanted to bring out some colors. The, the original skein was a lovely rich orange brown, light fingering weight. So this was the original, um, uh, project and I left this in here just to remind you guys of sort of where she had been with this and if you haven't seen the last show and you didn't s hear me read out what she wrote just pause here and and give it a read she has the sock done isn't that incredible I love it oh it just looks awesome and it, it's interesting how that gorgeous magenta pink that she put with the um, original skein, how it changes the colors in the original skein. Like if you had just the skein on its own, um, it would probably look a certain way, but because of the color that she chose to put with it, it really changes it. Um, I love it. I think it just is fantastic. Really cool. This is also from Alberto. I'm gonna press play before I keep on going. For me, yarn is the thing. With, that is that it may become a hat, mitten, scarf, or something woven is not why I spin. I hear ya. So I made a thing, but not on purpose. Back in 2017, I was gifted two pounds of in the grease roving of Navajo churro from Cape Cod. I spun, washed it, and let it sit until 2019. My friend and former colleague was, retire was retiring, so I knit up a small table runner in basket weave. He retired in early 2020 and then COVID hit. 2021, his wife was using it for the back of her work chair and asked for two more panels to turn into a lap blanket. I hadn't planned on making it again, so I had no documentation. I didn't even recall the pattern. When she sent me uh, what she sent me, I didn't recognize until I realized it was the back side of the item. We've all done that. I got approximate measurements and off I went, taking pics to document its progress. This year, I was able to obtain the original item to connect with the two new ones. Uh, we won't talk about washed versus unwashed, but that's how it went. It took three tries to get it to lay flat and not bunch up as I stitched it together. Next one, final wash and return to the owner. I have several pics, so hopefully they line up in order and I'll number them as well. Isn't that cool? So each panel 
is about 37 inches by 10 inches. It's fairly substantial once it was all put together. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Isn't that cool, you guys? I love this. Super fun. Thank you, you guys, for sharing and doing all that you do. Thank you for just being here and showing up and participating and being so positive and supportive as always. I really appreciate it. And I appreciate all of your kind words and your kind thoughts. Um, it's, it's just lovely to have you all here and to talk to you and to spend this time with you guys. Um, I want to thank you for being here. The, um, uh, where are we at? So this is the beginning of June. We have our next live stream is on uh, June 21st, 20th, uh, June 20th. I, I've got some exciting things. We've, we've got a, a birthdays, Canadian championship at BC Place tomorrow night. The kids have sports day. There's so much going on. So I'm excited to share that all with you on the next episode. And um, until then, happy making. I hope that you have an opportunity to come to one of the, one of the groups, whether it's Maker Morning or um, Fiber Prep Group. We do have book club firing up again. Becca was here briefly, but she had to go, of course, because it's their dinner time. Um, we're trying to figure out our next book. We haven't quite gotten there yet. Technically, we're supposed to be starting book club on Monday, uh, June 26th. But because we haven't settled on a book yet, we kind of haven't gotten things running, I suspect that it will be the first Monday in July. Um, either July 3rd or July 10th, we'll kind of get things up and running again. Um, we had our final book club meeting for The Secret River in uh, last Monday. It was wonderful. If, you want, if you've been following along but you haven't been able to make it to book club, the recording is available in the Slack channel under hashtag books. So uh, definitely have a look for that. And um, we'll let you guys know about what the next book is. Um, I've read like six books in the last month already. Like I'm just firing through books. And if you guys are on Goodreads, I, I think I'm on Goodreads as Rachel Smith. I will post in Slack. I will post my, um, my username um, so that you guys can follow me on Goodreads. And uh, we can keep the booky conversation going because many of us read a ton. Uh, fiction, nonfiction, audible, paper, like the library. Um, we're, a lot of us are reading a lot right now. I don't know why. It's just sort of something that's kind of happened. I intentionally set out this year to read more. I missed reading when I, I should, just before we go. When Nora was born, um, I had kind of, so what, after Nora was, after James was born, I started knitting a ton and um, I'd always knit, but like I started knitting a lot. And then when I was pregnant with Nora, I kept knitting, kept knitting. And then when Nora was born, um, I really sort of stopped reading. And so I'd always read through all of that, but I was knitting and reading. And then after Nora was born, I went back to spinning. And when I started spinning again, when Nora was a baby and I started the podcast and I hit record and I started talking about yarn and all of that, I didn't feel like I could do both. Like I just, I, for whatever reason, I felt like I had to put reading aside and I felt like I had, if I had time to myself and I had time to make, or I had time to sit quietly and do something that it wasn't going to be to sit and read. And it really wasn't until about two years ago that I started to really realize how much I missed that time spent reading. And I was listening to audio books. It wasn't that I wasn't still going through a ton of books and re reading a ton, but I was listening to them rather than reading. And there's something very different that happens when it's an audio experience versus a read experience. And so this year at Christmas time, I intentionally said to myself, this year I am going to read. I'm going to have a book that I'm reading at all times. And it's been the perfect balance. So no, I'm not making as much, but it's because I'm reading more. And I really needed that balance. Um, and I needed to bring reading back into my life and, and reading is for no one else except for myself. And I need that. So, um, yeah, if anybody wants to hop on Goodreads and follow each other, please follow me and, and, and cause I want to see what you're reading as well. So, uh, yeah, just a little side, side note there. So books, fiction, nonfiction, I'm your gal. All right, guys. As always, have a wonderful couple of weeks. I hope you have an opportunity to read, knit, spin, weave, whatever you want to do that fills your soul and fills your cup. 
and allows you to be a bit better than you were yesterday in terms of like the like your you as a person that you're that you're doing well as a person and i will see you guys in a couple of weeks bye everyone A very special thank you to those who have supported the work here at Woolen Spinning to make it sustainable. Thank you especially to Anne, Sarah, Tori, Amanda, and Lisa. We couldn't do this without you.